Welcome to the Conceive, Believe, and Achieve podcast. I'm your host, Sean Garris, and today we got a great guest. Today is a guest that I've been watching almost my entire life uh, of wrestling, uh, him and his brother, um, Greg. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, Chris Woodcroft. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate it. Nice awesome. to be here. Glad to have you here. Uh, you know, you have just recently appeared in the sport of wrestling again. Uh, you, I think you may have taken a little time off, but, you know, I was watching Facebook, I was watching, you know, social media, and then, boom, you're up and, and around again in the sport of wrestling at a different capacity you're not on the mats wrestling and battling these foes <laughs> but you're, you're you're behind the scenes what are you doing now so i just took the role as a high performance director for wrestling canada loot uh february of last year mm-hmm. so i've been doing it for just over a year and a half mm-hmm. um great to be back on the national and international scene trying mm-hmm. to help our uh, young athletes uh, reach the podium that's awesome. Uh, you know what? I was pretty excited to see that you're doing that. What does your job kind of entail? Because people see high performance director and they're like, hmm, scratch their head. <laughs> maybe they might have taken a look into, you know, you, you know, there, maybe somebody wanted to do your job and looked at it and went, oh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I have I have no idea what you do, but I have an idea. But let's uh, let's tell the, sure. the people out there. Yeah. So uh, it's you're in charge of all the national programs. Mm-hmm. So the key part is the national senior program, which is our Olympic team, mm-hmm. uh, putting their yearly training plans together, uh, both competition and training uh, throughout the year. So international competitions, international training camps, our domestic uh, camps and tournaments. Uh, a lot of policy work with regards to team selection, mm-hmm. uh, athlete assistance program, carding policies, uh, substance abuse, doping policies, things like that. Uh, so it's a combination of um, policy writing, uh, uh, leading the national team, I'm the team leader for all the national senior events, but also setting up the programs for our next gen program, our under 23s or under 20s or under 17s. Uh, kind of a coach of the coaches to a certain extent mm-hmm. um, and making sure we have all the plans in place for all the athletes. Nice. So that's it in a nutshell. In a nutshell. Yeah, that's, that's, my, that's my elevator speech for yeah. what I'm doing. Yeah, and yeah. what did you, uh, so what attracted you to this? So I obviously have been involved in wrestling my entire life, uh, gained so much of it as an athlete. Uh, and then when I left the sport uh, and retired, I went into education and I was a teacher for a uh, long, long time in the mm-hmm. uh, Waterloo area for 17 years. Uh, while I was doing that, I was coaching a little bit of university, but primarily a high school coach. Mm-hmm. Um, and then moved into administration for the last half of my career. Uh, and while I was still administrator, I was still coaching. So I was coaching high school for 25 to 30 years. Uh, so I, always, I was always on the mat with the kids, always on the mat trying to help athletes move forward. And then uh, when COVID hit, like everybody else, you kind of reassess things to a certain extent. Education was a very difficult time during COVID. Oh, yeah. uh, and Wrestling Canada was going through a difficult time. A lot of safe sport issues were happening, mm-hmm. and uh, they lost a couple of high-performance directors uh, for different reasons. Uh, and I received a couple of calls saying, listen, they're looking for a new high-performance director. What they needed was they needed someone with a leadership experience mm-hmm. uh, and with a wrestling background. Uh, wrestling is a unique culture. as We kind of only respect people that have been gone through a combat of sport to a certain extent. Yeah. So, that's what, so it kind of fit my role. You know, I was uh, finished off as a superintendent in education, so you're dealing with a lot of people. Uh, and a lot of policy work, so it's a combination of leadership and with the wrestling background, it was kind of a perfect fit. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I threw my name and my, my hat in the ring. I felt here's an opportunity for me to give back in a different way mm-hmm. uh, at the national and international level. And uh, if they wanted me, you know, I am who I am. This is I, I was right up front with them. Okay, here's who I am. Here's who you're gonna get. If you want me, I'd love to do it. Um, if not, I, if you can find someone better, fine. Please, please take them. Um, but I was fortunate enough to get the role uh, and I've been running for about a year and a half. It's been awesome. It's been a oh, yeah. You're really enjoying it. Oh, it's unbelievable. It's, uh, yeah, they're, uh, I am. And so to a certain extent, I'm, I'm, I am back on the mats with the athletes to a certain extent. So when I'm going to training camps and being able to, you know, kind of show what our experience and what we learn and uh, yeah, sure. Some nuggets of information with them and try and help them reach their full potential. Yeah, and I don't think we touched on it in the introduction, but you are a two-time Olympian, so you have that experience, right? Which Olympics did you? Did yeah, you so I uh, I had a long road. It was it was I was very fortunate. Uh, kind of grew up in Hamilton. Uh, went to Bishop Bryan High School, which is kind of a uh, wrestling wrestling uh, mega powerhouse or warehouse of wrestlers. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I first came on, right time, right place, and uh, had a coach named Harry Mancini, who was kind of similar to your father, Harry Jurs, yeah. where he every weekend we'd be going somewhere. He'd be be blowed up the van. Get let's get going. So Harry was an icon in uh, high school high school coaches for sure. Uh, and then I just stayed in Hamilton, very loyal to the Hamilton Wrestling Club, McMaster University. Mm-hmm. 
when I was in high school, uh, my coach sent me to the Olympic trials in 84. Yeah. Uh, and I finished second, uh, lost to Ray Takahashi, icon out of London. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so know, right? so yeah. Uh, just kind of my first glimpse of what, what national, international wrestling was about. And then when Ray retired, I basically took over the weight class mm -hmm. and was the number one guy for about 10 years. So I was fortunate. I went to a number of world championships, Commonwealth Games, Pan Am Games. Uh, I was fortunate to go to the 88 uh, Seoul Olympics, Seoul Korea, and then my my part of my pinnacle was the ninety two Barcelona mm -hmm. Olympics. So mm -hmm. yeah, great, uh, very fortunate, wonderful. Uh, every one of my friends is still in the wrestling scene. Yeah, uh, very close friends with all all of them still. So yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, speaking of Olympic Games, um, you have the Olympic trials coming up very very soon. Um, so yeah, are you a part of that too? Yeah. So we're, uh, yes, I am okay. for sure. This is this is part of our national program. So. It's actually next weekend uh, in in Edmonton, uh, December fifteenth to the seventeenth. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a uh, our national team selection. So if they win there, they have an opportunity to qualify the weight class and go to the Olympics. So mm -hmm. this is kind of, this is kind of their first step um, go, going into it. So yeah, so we're at Edmonton next weekend. Uh, competition is a Friday, Saturday, Sunday tournament. Uh, the Friday Saturday is the freestyle uh, component in the women's wrestling, so men's freestyle, and women's wrestling, um, and this will determine our number one wrestlers coming out of Canada, and then they move on uh, to the next Olympic qualifier, which is in Mexico in uh, uh, the first weekend of March. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called the Pan American Olympic Qualifier. They need to place top two at the Pan Ams to be able to qualify for the Olympic Games. So, so once they win the trials, I'm just I'm, I, I know the process, but I, just for people that are yep. listening, once you win the trials, it doesn't guarantee you a spot on the Olympic team. That's correct. You still have to earn that spot by qualifying uh, internationally. So for us, it's the Pan American Championships. It's an Olympic qualifier. It's called Pan American Olympic qualifier, uh, and you need to place top two there mm -hmm. to earn a spot at the Olympic Games. If you don't, you have one more shot. There's a last chance world qualifier in Istanbul, Turkey in the beginning of May, mm -hmm. and that's your last shot. Top three from there uh, f for the entire world, basically, has the last three spots at the Olympics. And what does that ensure for us as Canadians? <clears throat> so for, for us, we're, we're obviously hoping we have 12 athletes that are going to qualify at Edmonton to earn their own spot. Mm -hmm. Six men, six women in freestyle. Uh, we'll have some Greco as well. Uh, we're, but we're predominantly a freestyle nation. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll bring those athletes down to Mexico. We're hoping to qualify as many as we can out of the 12 uh, to earn their spots, and then they'll have their pathway to get to the Olympics. Mm -hmm. if, for the, if they don't qualify, basically they have one more shot in May, uh, so, so they'll take a break. They'll get ready for the May event, and then hopefully do well there to be able to qualify. So we're, yeah. hoping, we're hoping to send as many as we can, obviously. Awesome. You know... Um, <laughs> One of the biggest things with with wrestling, and this is one of my one of my father's beefs. I remember hearing about it all the time when he was he was uh, wrestling or when we were wrestling. But he said funding funding for this sport. This sport is so small when it comes to, compared to the U.S. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about that. What's what's happening yeah. with funding with you guys? Yeah. So we're 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 we're, we're well. Canada is unique. Canada is a unique nation in that we are trying to fund a full winter program and a full summer program. Mm -hmm. There's not too many other countries in the world that are trying to fund both those programs. Mm -hmm. uh, we do really well in winter sports, yep. right? Hockey, skiing, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but we're trying to fund summer sports as well. And we always have uh, medalists in a wide variety of sports. You know, you look at wrestling, you look at judo, you look at gymnastics, you look at uh, track and field. Like we, we do pretty well considering the size of our country and, mm -hmm. and the money we put into it. But we're all fighting for the same pool of uh, Sport Canada dollars. Um, and those dollars are always kind of dwindling to a certain extent. Uh, so we are doing the best we can with what we have. Uh, we're putting uh, all our eggs kind of into our Olympic basket for this year. Mm -hmm. And then once this year is over, we, we kind of relook at it and we'll put more money into our next-gen athletes because we got four more years to get, get those athletes ready. The reality is um, other countries have a lot more private donorship than we have. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we are always looking, we're always hoping for uh, private donors to come in and support. Um, when I don't know about you, but when I was an athlete, we didn't have a lot of money growing up at a Hamilton, uh, and I wouldn't have been able to wrestle the, the, way, it's, the way it's set up right now. Uh, it's very difficult. So uh, we have a lot of athletes that do kind of crowdfunding pages to try and support themselves and things like that. Uh, if you want to be a good wrestler, it's a full-time job. It's not a part-time job. You can't be a part-time wrestler and be an international wrestler. So the reality is uh, our national team are all kind of carded athletes, uh, and that provides a great stipend, mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't. It's it's still probably less than welfare to be honest with you mm -hmm. um so they're they're always struggling for dollars they're always looking for extra extra money to be able to continue to do it so it's difficult for sure uh they put their heart and souls in it and we're trying to support them as best we can yeah uh you know what i, I remember my dad talking about how 
um, just being, you know, he, he didn't have, he'd have to take a job, uh, you know, a, 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 like somewhere in the food services or something like that. But then he, he'd, he'd also get in trouble for missing shifts because he had to train. And yep. So he ended up quitting his job. So he was forcing, from no, unable to get a, his spot on the Olympic team, he couldn't be, be a, he couldn't work, even yeah. pro, even part time. So it's an, it's so important to have that support from your government for some sort of donors. Yeah. Um, you know, are you seeing more donors come up through Canada Wrestling at all? Uh, or? Um, I wouldn't be the one to be able to say that. I know oh, okay. we have a financial person that deals with it all. Yeah. Uh, I know I know there's not enough, put, yeah. put, it, put it that way. Like our, our, our under-17 program, our under-20 program, and our under-23 program are all, are all basically self-funded opportunities for those athletes. Mm-hmm. We'll pay for a coaching staff and an athletic therapist to go to the international tournaments. Mm-hmm. But the reality is if an athlete wants to compete, they're going to be paying their own way, which is... It, it's difficult 100 percent is difficult yeah. so you know if you want to go to the world championships you have to go to the pan ams first to go to the world championship so you're paying to go to the pan ams you're under 17 years old it might cost you five thousand dollars might cost you another five thousand dollars to go to the world so we have some work to do 100 yeah. percent we do uh as i said both you and i have gained so much from this sport we know we know how well it is so we yeah. so you know we, you, in ontario there's a lot of good high school wrestling and it's mm-hmm. it's fairly inexpensive yeah but as soon as you start getting into the club program and the provincial program and the national program there is dollars involved yeah. it, it's not as much as playing ho- ice hockey don't get me wrong it's not <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's still one of the lower end sports. It is for sure. Um, it, you know, it doesn't cost you anything, right? You don't need any equipment. All right, the mats there on, at the school, and yeah. you, you go up and you show up, and you you get a fantastic workout in, and you you, you learn life lessons uh, with regards to discipline and dedication and perseverance and uh, uh, and respect. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably the respect is probably the greatest in any other sport. It would be wrestling with with regards to respecting your opponent. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you yeah. get there's so many valuable life lessons that you, that you get out of that sport. Uh, we just need to figure out the dollar piece. Yeah, um, and and I'm sure uh, you know as we progress, we will. Crowdfunding has made it a little bit easier for these young guys coming up, young g- guys and girls coming yep. up. Um, you know, but here's the time. If you guys are listening to this podcast now, this is where we need donors. So you know, if you're looking to donate to Canada Wrestling and your own alumni, you've been on one of these teams before. You know how hard it is. So if you can loosen up your pocketbooks, maybe one hundred percent. And I and I think we have a lot of generous and, and selfless people out there. One hundred percent, we do. Canada has a unique culture in that uh, most athletes give back to their alumni, right? Mm-hmm. They give back to the wrestling club they came out of, the university they came out of. Yep. It's not as much a culture to give back to the national team. Mm-hmm. And we need to shift that a little bit. Uh, you know, tr- tr- you know, they, they gain a lot in their clubs and in their, in their uh, university programs. 100% they do. Mm-hmm. And that's our grassroots program to get to the national team. But once you get to the national team, it costs money mm-hmm. to, to continue that program. And we know that we need to, we need to get, have our athletes compete more internationally and train more internationally. That's mm-hmm. the only way we're going to get better as, as a country. Mm-hmm. Um, and it costs money. So, yeah. yeah. How do you guys utilize the uh, U.S. at all? Or do you at all when it comes to yes, training internationally? Because those guys are tough sons of guns over there. 100%. Yeah. Uh, they, they are such a collaborative nation. Mm-hmm. Uh, excellent, excellent coaching. Terry Steiner is the women's coach. Uh, and Bill... Uh, the, the men's coach have always been very, very open with regards to ha- what training methods they're using. They invite us down for, for training camps and things like that. Uh, we have some clubs that take advantage of it more than others. Uh, the American system has kind of their NCAA program used to be really locked down and it's kind of opened up a lot more with regards to they have regional training centers mm-hmm. which are freestyle we wrestle freestyle their university system is a little bit different it's collegiate but mm-hmm. it's similar Wrestling's wrestling is mm-hmm. wrestling uh, and the regional training centers are very open to having athletes come down and train because it helps them they know that you know if we bring good athletes down there it's going to help their partners as well mm-hmm. um, there's certain times of the year they're going to lock down leading into the world championships or Olympics they'll, they'll probably lock the doors a little bit but they, they're really friendly they're very very good giving of their of their information of their knowledge of their uh, ability to help us share so i'll give you an easy example one of our former national coaches uh, tanya verbeek yes uh, was a long time she's now the assistant coach at iowa university mm-hmm. university of iowa uh, hawkeyes for the women's program uh, and we had a, a, a women's world cup camp there last year 15 nations we got invited probably because of her and terry steiner uh <laughs> and we brought you know we brought we brought our national team and our next gen athletes down there fantastic opportunity for those yeah. you know you, you drive to you know like your dad used to we you know put them in a put put uh, 15 people from the st Catharines. And i drove them there why not 10 yeah. hours let's go we'll, we'll get there and we'll we'll get the benefit of a week training with the best in the world so yeah, yeah. We, we need to take we need to take more advantage of those opportunities uh, lots of clubs are doing a great job uh, visiting national training centers in mm-hmm. in either Michigan or. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what? I I mean, I went to school down in the states, and, and you know, the, the just the the way they treat anybody, it's it's a hospitable nation. I mean, I guess some people don't think that. You know, maybe they have these preconceived. But once you get down there, there there's some friendly people, and they want to help you. 
One hundred percent. Yeah, uh, and and wrestling is a it's a small tight community. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't matter if it's nationally or internationally. When you, the, the best part of me rejoining the national program is when I'm going on the uh, international events and you're seeing people that either used to coach you or used to be competitors. And everybody everybody's great. It's a you know we're we're all trying to help each other. We are. There's no 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 qualms about that. And and it, with, with the you know, with the internet, with the YouTube video, there's no secrets. Like the reality is, you know, we're, when our best is wrestling, their best, we know exactly what they're going to do. It's just a matter mm-hmm. if we can stop them or we can score on them. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, it, the event of the internet, the uh, it, it's kind of funny because I've been watching, uh, you know, those tutorials sometimes uh, with different. I coach football, I coach wrestling, but you'll get on there now, and then there's a technique on, that Michigan State is using for their, or Michigan is using for, you know, their football uh, wide receivers, and, and you're on there. You can see what exactly yeah. what, what's out there, so it's a great tool. We didn't have that when we were young. No, no, we did not. Yeah, we had those books. Yeah. I don't remember that. You had to turn the pages and, and look, and there was yeah. drawings of the wrestlers. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. <laughs> but, we, but we always had some key coaches that knew, mm-hmm. they knew. They knew every wrestler inside and out, so they could always give you good, good instructions. But, yeah, it's just... It, it, it's such an advantage for the wrestlers today. They know exactly what they're going to see uh, mm-hmm. going out there. But like you know, wrestling is one of those sports that yeah, I know you're going to do a double leg on me, but can I stop you? That's that's going to be the key, right? So exactly, yeah, exactly, because yeah. you're training nonstop to do that. Let's turn the page a little bit, or turn the tables, not turn the tables, but uh, turn. Let's say turn the t- turn the page. Uh, let's talk about your career. Sure. How did you start off in wrestling? Because yeah. you know what, <laughs> wrestling is kind of a really tough sport to get involved with. Uh, I yeah. had no choice, so I was just wondering about yours. Did you so have I, a choice? I did have a choice. Yeah. Um, but I'm 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 am one of six boys, wow. and I'm the fourth of six boys. So okay. you kind of grew up kind of fighting to, to survive in your house. That's just <laughs> that's just how it was, believe it or not. And yeah. uh, East End Hamilton's a pretty pretty tough area. Yeah. Um, but I was also a, like a typical Canadian boy that I played ice hockey growing up. Okay. Uh, but I wasn't a big I was never a big 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 kid. Um, so going into grade nine, I got cut from a high level hockey team and that kind of closed that door on that sport. And I just right time, right place entered Bishop Ryan high school. And, uh, the coach Harry Mancini just kind of grabbed me in the hallway and says, you know, you need, you need to try this. And he, and he was a, he was probably the best motivator coach I've ever met in my entire life. hundred percent. He's one of those guys that you'd run through the wall for him. That's just who he was. Mm-hmm. Um, and he put his, uh, his passion into, 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 into his athletes. Uh, and we had a really good group of athletes going through at that time. So he recruited the best athletes in the school. Like he would go out and, and challenge the football players. You know, come on, I'll give this a try. See how, see how tough you think you are. Um, and we, we, when I was going through the high school program, we were one of the you know top in the province. Oh yeah, and, yeah. I so remember. That's just and, and that that kind of establishment has continued. You know, success breeds success. So right time, right place. And at the same time, though. Uh, a new coach started at McMaster University, a gentleman named Nick Cipriano, and he had just started there, and he had taken over the Hamilton Wrestling Club. Mm-hmm. So it was a it was a perfect marriage in that once we finished our high school season, Harry encouraged us to go to the club. So we started wrestling twelve months a year rather than just a four month season, mm-hmm. uh, and that that Im- improved us leaps and bounds. So the, basically, all the Bishop Bryan wrestlers started wrestling out of the Hamilton Wrestling Club. And I finished my high school career there and then moved on to McMaster University mm-hmm. um, and wrestled for McMaster for the five years uh, at the same time wrestling for Team Canada. So basically, as, as I said earlier, as Ray Takahashi retired, I kind of took over that weight class and grew into it and grew into it. So I was very fortunate, wrestled for, the, for Team Canada for 10 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, lots of great experiences. As I said, uh, you, what you miss more than anything is the training mm-hmm. in the training room and with your buddies. You don't, you don't, miss, you don't miss the cutting weight. You don't miss the competitions as much. <laughs> but you do miss hanging out with your buddies on a regular basis and, and giving it everything you got to, to kind of reach the podium. So I was very fortunate. I had a wonderful career. I uh, I probably could have went one more one more Olympic Olympic cycle. Mm-hmm. Uh, I chose not to because I had a younger brother, Greg, that was moving into that, was in that weight class. Mm-hmm. Actually, him and I competed a couple times in oh, the yeah. national final, believe it or not. Wow. But I was the older brother. So older brother always wins sort of, right? So, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how it was. Yeah. Um, but Greg was ready to take over, so I stepped aside. I had an opportunity to train with him, and he uh, he was our representative at the 96 Olympics awesome. as well. Yeah. So, uh that's a pretty cool story, man. I yeah. got to tell you, like uh, some brothers would, especially uh, yeah. you know, that that killer mindset. You would they would they say no? I'm not. Yeah. Gonna, I'm not stepping aside. You got to beat me. Yeah. Uh, but you know that's awesome. Yeah. For you. And he made the team. And he made the team. Yeah, yeah. He actually he was number two for in '94, '95, and then he he uh, won the Olympic trials and qualified at the Pan American Championships and represented Team Canada at the. 96 Atlanta Games, and uh, and believe it or not, uh, mm-hmm. both of us had our uh, had the top finish at the Olympics for ourselves. I finished eighth in '92, and he finished eighth in '96, and we kind of matched each other, which is nice. kind of pretty cool. So you got bragging rights. Nobody yeah. topped each other. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> None of the, pa- the parents could say that's my favorite, yeah. right? <laughs> 
Yeah, that's, that's right. Awesome, man. Yeah. Great story. Like that's 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 pretty cool. I, yeah. I like the especially the, you know, again. I traveled the the world with my dad, but I also had my brothers uh, wrestling too. So I know how important it is to have yeah. you know one, one somebody to look up to. I mean, I guess you didn't, but Greg did. Yeah. Um, and for me, it was just uh, you know it's just he. The reason I joined this board, I actually quit for a little bit. Well, maybe a year. Of course, my dad was pissed off, but you know. And then I saw my brother doing so. I'm like, geez, I, I, I better pick up, <laughs> pick up where you know, because yeah. I was in grade nine, I think it was, and you know, um, you know, everybody's going, hey, little Garris, you, yep. you gonna wrestle? And I'm yep. like, no. <laughs> <laughs> that was Greg's response too. Oh yeah. Yeah, going into high school, uh, he, Greg didn't play a lot of sports uh, coming up coming up to high school. He, he loved fishing. Mm-hmm. Right? He loved playing chess. Yeah. Uh, he was bound and bent. He wasn't going to wrestle. But when you walked into the Bishop Ryan hallways, the wrestlers wouldn't let you not wrestle. That's just what it was. So, oh yeah. Yeah. So he had he had a I think had probably a difficult grade nine year. But after that, he really he excelled at it. And once you're good at something, you you, you enjoy it more. Right. That's like anything. Yeah. You know what I yeah. he he came down to uh, my dad used to take wrestlers from all over the province down to. Uh, Arizona, California, and I believe he was on one of our Arizona trips. Yep. And I remember him. He was a good-looking fella. Yeah. Uh, and we were wrestling at these high schools, and the high schools were packed. Of course, down in the states, it's a little different, right? You yep. can get the the auditorium sold out. There's a Canadian, there, and they said the Canadian national team. We're yeah, from, yeah. a team from Montana, <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. right? Yep. And Greg gets on the mat, and the girls just went nuts, right? I'm like, what? I want that to happen yeah. to me. Come on. <laughs> yeah, he was always the better-looking brother for yeah. sure. Hundred percent, he was. <laughs> Uh, definitely, uh, he loved those trips with your dad. Like, yeah. like, and and we need to do more of those things now. That's the reality. Yeah. Is we ne- we need to get our athletes on the mats more often in the states, uh, yeah. uh, knowing that we can compete at the level. We have some phenomenal athletes. Like we really do. Yeah. Uh, we just have to make sure they get exposed to a, to a greater extent. And your dad did a great job. He 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 was so open. Uh, I remember my dad. So we're from Hamilton. I remember my, my dad driving my brother to London to meet him. You know, at the White Oaks Mall and pick him up and get a van and get going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just yeah. you know, those those. Yeah. Your dad is one of those rare individuals. He really is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and as I said, my my coach Harry Mancini is one of those as well. That they, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we need more and more people like that because I think, yeah. especially with COVID, it's killed you know some people's desires to. To do a little bit yeah. more, yeah. right? We kind of just sit back and with COVID, we're like, oh, I don't have to do so much. I don't have to go to work. I only have to go to yeah. work one day, <laughs> one day a week. Come on, right? Yeah, rest, you can't you can't wrestle from home. That just doesn't work that way, right? So, oh, man. We, we're fortunate that we have a lot of young coaches that are that are stepping up right now, and nice. uh, and some of them are kind of trying to make a living out of it as well through through private clubs, kind of what the jujitsu does and judo does and, and yeah. karate does, you know, and, which is great. You know, they they have such an, a, a wealth of experience to share, uh, and you know. The reality is, we need everyone needs to earn a living. So I, yeah. I, I don't I don't begrudge them at all. I think they're doing a fantastic job, and those people are putting their their life on hold to try and help athletes move forward. It's a, coaching is a very selfless job. You know, mm. you've coached a long time. You know you don't you don't you don't get back what you put into it. You never do. That's the reality. Mm-hmm. But you're doing it to try and help the next generation of people, and we have a lot of people that are willing to do that as well. Yeah, you know one of the things I, I saw, um, and I don't mean to talk about my dad so much, but um, at his funeral. Some, you know, the, the the lineup that people were coming through, there was hundreds and hundreds of people, but one that, that really stuck with me was, um, it was actually a gentleman, Hollis Huggins, it, it, it was his parents, they showed up, and they said, you know, I just want to thank you and the family for making the sacrifices so that your yep. dad could make the sacrifices for our young kid. And, you know, you said, well, it's a thankless job, yeah. right there, I, you know, again, he, it would have been nice for him to see that, but hey, man, that was that's the effect that coaches have on, on kids. Yeah. And you know, and, and sometimes that's enough. And I think that's where a lot of coaches yeah, do. That's do why it. we do it. Hundred percent. Yeah, hundred yeah, yeah. percent. Uh, you see the benefit. It's like it's like you know, I I, I taught for a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, teaching is kind of very similar to coaching, and it's a pretty selfish job. You know, you're, you're not you're not doing you're not going to get rich teaching. That's the reality. But you are going to have an in- impact on the next generation of people. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. And we all we all I'm sure we all had at least one teacher that made a difference in our lives. Yeah. Um, very similar to coaching for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, let me ask you about some of the coaches you had. Of course, you've talked about Harry Mancini. Um, what I guess are what are the qualities in him that you've taken uh, from him yeah. that you've kind of transferred into your own coaching lifestyle? Sure, I I, I have definitely taken a little bit of everybody that I've mm-hmm. had an interaction with. So I've, once you're on the national team, you have a lot of different coaches that come and interact with you, mm-hmm. uh, and every coach has a has a unique personality, but also a gift as well. Mm-hmm. So Harry was a motivator, hundred percent. He was a motivator. He he uh, he built a really strong family family dynamic. 
uh, within our team, uh, it was always us against the world. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was that idea that, you know what, don't worry about the officials. They're against you. You better go out there and knowing that you got to beat the opponent and beat the official. Mm -hmm. And I really do take that as a, as a country. And that because we're a small country internationally, you're not going to get any, any breaks. So the reality is you know you're going out there and you better beat the wrestler and you better beat the official. That's just what, that's the mindset you have to have. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea uh, that we're, we all have each other's back. It's a family. It's tight. That's a, that's a big part what what Harry did. As I said, you'd run, you'd run for the wall for the guy. When, when he would walk in the room 10 years later, your intensity would go from here to here immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, just just who he was. So that, that was a big part of it. He, he also had no problem reaching out and bringing other people in. So uh, we were in high school and he'd bring in Gene Mills, world champion Gene Mills from the United States, mm -hmm. come and do clinics for us. Yeah. Or he'd get us to clinics uh, uh, that the Ontario Wrestling Association would run and, and we'd go there. So he, he, he reached out for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I was fortunate to have Nick Cipriano for, for the majority of my career, probably for 10 years. Uh, and he was a very strong technical coach. So mm -hmm. he had a, a, a very strong technical base, uh, but also a, he was a physiologist. So he had a scientific background with regards to training and, and what you need to do to get better. And once again, another gentleman that would, you know, he, he thought he could get you to a certain level and then he needed to bring other people in. So while I was there, he brought in a coach named Carlo Kasap, who was a world bronze medalist in Greco. Uh, we, had him, we had him for two years. Yeah. He brought in Anatoly Belaglaza, yeah. world and Olympic champion, to coach us for five years. Mm -hmm. So for those people to kind of put their egos aside and bring in other other coaches to make the difference. So I know that it's not just me. I need to bring in other people from other areas. I need to listen to people. Um, it's still, but, but it's still a sport in that people want to have some fun as well. Mm -hmm. So, I, uh, you know, Johnny Park. Johnny Park yeah. is a the, 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 uh, huge, huge advocate for the... Uh, beat the streets program yes. out of here, out of the Toronto area. But when I was when I was an athlete, he was the coach at York University and Twist and Shout Wrestling Club. Yep. Uh, and I had him on a number of number of trips. Uh, very strong technical tactical coach. Um, he he's one that probably brought in the tactics of a of a match more than anyone else that I had with mm -hmm. regards to a game plan. What's your game plan going into it? Mm -hmm. Not just you're going to go hope and win, but what's your plan to, to do that? So he he brought in, he was a very strong tactical coach and. And I saw the benefit of that, but he also saw the fun side of the sport. So once the once the event was over, made sure that his athletes were having some fun and enjoyed the experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and it wasn't just all about work. So we worked hard, but we also played hard. So um, that was a, a big part of it as well. Um, I'll give you I'll give you two other coaches. Uh, we have we have so many good coaches in Canada, but the ones that I had as well. Uh, Mike Jones out of Simon Fraser University. Oh yeah, uh, who is American background. Yeah, um, but his attitude that. Uh, when you step on that mat, uh, you're 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 going to win. It's there's no there's no questions. Like it's not oh I'm gonna go try my best. Mm -hmm. Wrestling doesn't work that way. You're going out there and you're doing everything possible to win that match. Yep. That was his attitude. Um, and and Victor Zilberman, uh, oh, Montre yeah. the Montreal coach, uh, came out of a Soviet system mm -hmm. uh, and very disciplined. Uh, you know, uh, you're working hard every single session. You know, and we're talking, you know, 12 to 14 sessions a week and you're working hard in every single one mm -hmm. uh, and a, more of a scientific discipline approach as well. Um, but they all, all, every room has a bit of a different culture, but they've all had world champions come out of their room. So, yeah, you try and take a bit of everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I was, we were talking earlier before we started and I, I truly believe that we're not a big enough nation not to collaborate. Mm -hmm. We got fantastic coaches across the, you know, got Marty Call out of St. Catharines, you got Paul Ragusa out of Calgary, uh, you got Justin Abdu and Dave McKay out of, out of British Columbia. Raj Verdi, you got Dave, David Zilberman, the younger Zilberman, yes. you know, Montreal. I could name, you could name, I could, I could continue. Yep. But I'm saying every every culture of room is different, but we have to collaborate. We got to get our athletes wrestling together more often mm -hmm. to be able to get better. Uh, we have a lot of a lot of coaches that are that are doing the right thing to get better. Stan Sogas out of out of Team Impact, Team Impact he's been yeah. doing it for twenty five thirty years, mm -hmm. and he, and every time I go on a professional development opportunity, he's on the call because yeah. he's trying to get better. Yeah, that's just an example. But we have coaches like they're, they're everyone's trying to get better. What they do to try and give every advantage to their athlete to be the best they have. Yeah, yeah. And you know that's part of part of the why I started the Conceive, Believe, and Achieve podcast is for coaches because I wanted them to see different styles of coaching, differently people from different backgrounds. Um, I've been on a journey of kind of just building myself as a coach, uh, and in the process, I've entered into the sport of swimming. You, you never think that yeah. I would be. Yeah, yeah. I saw your eyes. Go, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't swim. But I have been exposed to uh, the University of Michigan's coach uh, Jim Richardson, who I've done a podcast, two podcasts with, actually, and his philosophy and how he 
treats his swimmers, how he treats his athletes. Um, you know, he sends me books. He sends me, you know, um, uh, lesson plans, stuff like that, uh, and, and articles to read. And it's just amazing to have support from other coaches to build on from there. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I like it when I hear about, you said, like Stan Zogas, you know, attending every one of your the webinars or whatever. Yeah. Um, you're building yourself to become a better person, whoever you are. And then, in turn, you're going to be affecting other people's lives. So, uh, you know, I like hearing stuff like that because that's what I think as coaches, you know, as you, you, you can't wrestle anymore because we're getting old. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And w- w- but we're trying, like, I think, especially in wrestling, you know, wrestling has been going on for centuries and centuries and centuries. You yeah. think, okay, so how much new is there to learn? But there, there actually is a lot to learn, to continue to learn, not just with the technical part, but uh, with the sports science part. Like, we have a performance analysis that's analyzing what's the best way to, you know, to hit a sweep single, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, with regards to dietitian and nutrition, we know it's a weight class sport. So, what's mm-hmm. the best way to get that athlete on weight? Mm-hmm. You know, you know, if, is, is it, what's the maximum way they should be cut? And what's, you know, what, it, there's this thing called water loading now uh, that a lot of the MMA athletes are doing. And we have some, some female athletes that are doing water loading to make sure they're making weight. So, there's different, there's just different areas that we need to make sure we're, we're targeting. Uh, to give our athletes the best chance possible, mm-hmm. uh, we know the difference between a gold medal and a, and a silver medal comes down to you know a very very tiny bit, and we want to make sure that we've done everything possible uh, to give them that opportunity for sure. I like that. That's another thing that I've been looking into as well. Um, this fellow by the name of Vern Gambetta probably haven't heard his name. Uh, Vern came on the podcast. Vern is actually he was the uh, strength and conditioning coach for um, the Chicago White Sox, the Chicago Bulls. San Francisco 49ers, the um, Kansas City Chiefs, all there. And I found out him through Jim Richardson. Jim, Jim Richardson was actually looking for a dry, better dry land plant, uh, uh, program for the University of Michigan at the time. And uh, I guess he contacted the best of the best, and, and he wasn't sure that the phone call was going to even go anywhere. Yep. Uh, but it did. And uh, he started working with his swimmers, and Jim ended up winning 14 Big Ten titles while he was there wow. with uh, Jim going on. But it, um, Vern Gambetta takes a different style of approach, similar to what you're talking about. These, it's, it's all, um, all science-based as well. And, uh, you know, we, I, I've been watching him through the sport of swimming with Summer McIntosh. I don't know if you know that name. I do. Okay, so I think Summer, every Canadian does. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Summer's been working with him extensively. And when Jim, Jim had said to me, he goes, uh, Sean, he goes, you've got to watch Summer. Um, I was talking to my friend Vern. He goes, in the next, uh, next big meet she has, she's going to blow people away. And sure enough, at, you know, I forgot about it for a bit, and then I'm watching the, uh, the trials uh, over at uh, the Pan Am Center. Yep. And she was miles ahead of the Canadian competition. It was just amazing to yeah. see that. But part of it, the reason why, is Vern Gambetta. Uh, if you haven't get a chance to check out his stuff, or okay. even if you want to contact him, he's always open. You know, we didn't have that before. No, no, we well, we always tried to get stronger. Like we did a lot of ropes, a lot of chin ups, a lot of dips, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, we all, we all, wrestling is what our coach used to say. That, you know, technically and tactically, if you're all equal, it's the strongest guy's going to win the match. So mm-hmm. you better get as strong as you possibly can. Um, but there's right ways to do it, mm-hmm. uh, and we know there's uh, benefit. Uh, the benefits, uh, if you're doing it the right way, is is, is fantastic. So mm-hmm. with regards to physiology, uh, and diet, and strength and conditioning, and nutri- and uh, mental mental performance, and mm-hmm. there's just there's just so many pieces that to to make an. Uh, a, a world class athlete. That's why these athletes are so rare. Like the reality is, everybody has a little bit, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But for those athletes that have all of it, um, they're pretty rare, pretty special for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, talent can only go so far, though, right? Talent. Uh, it, it's the effort and attitude <laughs> that goes in with it as well. Yeah. Uh, you could be a talented kid, but if you don't have the co- right coaches, if you don't have the, right, you're not exposed to the right YouTube videos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're not going to go too much further. Yeah. And I, I, I go back to swimming. I saw that with a club that I was kind of doing a case study on, uh, where the uh, the coach was, yeah, let's say, subpar. And, but he had talented athletes, and the talented athletes were doing well, but now they've got to this point where they can't get any further. So it's so important as either a club, a nation, to evolve and get that extra support for our athletes because we, we can't just run on talent alone. No, and we're, we're not big enough to run on talent alone. That's, re- that's the reality. Mm-hmm. Um, and you've wrestled a long time, you know. So uh, we see a lot of talented wrestlers coming, coming through high school that don't, don't 
move on past that. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is that it is that rare athlete that has all of it, um, and the attitude is a huge part. Like you have to be willing, you got to be willing to put the time in, right? That's the reality. It's uh, kind of like cross country running; it all kind of kind of goes out in a wash. Like basically, if you don't put the time in on the mats, you're not gonna you're not gonna advance. So uh, it's a very you have to be very disciplined and very dedicated to your sport. Uh, mm -hmm. Definitely, talent is part of it with regards to um, being able to to obviously perform on the mat but the reality is you need to put the time in yeah you, i can't make a world champion in in four years doesn't doesn't work that way it takes a long time to, to develop a wrestler in a combat sport yeah one of the things that you, you, dwayne johnson says all the time is like I, you got to put the work in yeah if you don't put the work yeah. in what do you think yeah, yeah i think there's an expectation with some people i'm not saying all people but there's some people that there's this you know i'm going to get better through osmosis yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no magic pills in, in the sport of wrestling, that's no, for sure. No. Yeah, uh, it's funny because I, I, when I send my emails to the athletes, I usually I, I have a tagline that I finish off with, and I stole it from Daniel Agali, who was one of our uh, uh, Olympic champions, one of our rare Olympic champions out of Canada for wrestling. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it basically just says, keep sweating. Because yeah. the reality is you need to keep putting the dime in. You need to keep working. That's mm -hmm. the reality. That's the only way you're going to get better. So Yeah, iron sharpens iron as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's why. That's why when we talk about collaborating and and, and we want athletes to train together. Mm -hmm. Like I want, you know, we have some athletes that are. Oh no, I, I can't wrestle with that person. He's my, he's my competitor. Well, the reality is, we put him in the same room for a week. We're going to help each other get better. Mm -hmm. Iron sharpens our iron, right? Yeah. That, that is the reality. We're all going to get better. Yeah, a week before the like right, a week before the Olympic trials. Yeah, we're not going to wrestle with that person for sure. You're not. You you need to get ready for your for your event. Um, but during the training camp sessions and things like that, we need to we need to push each other for mm -hmm. sure. We do. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, we're. I mean, we're talking about iron sharpens iron. What is it? So, um, you got an athlete in a room, and you've got that happening, and they're getting beat up all the time. How do you How do you deal with that? Because sometimes they can just go the other way. They can say, I, can't, I don't want to take this. Yeah, as a coach. And, and well, I think it's sharing your own experiences that we. All, it, you know, it's. Uh, it's not a linear line. To, it's not a linear linear uh, tra trajectory to get to the podium. The reality is, there's lots of hurdles and lots of turns along the way, and there's dips in our training. Like there, it's not it's not a smooth curve. It's it's not. So, uh, it, it, but it also prepares you for life because as we know, as we, you know, as you get older, you go through life, and there's there's hurdles and and pitfalls along the way that you know, uh, as my one uncle used to say, uh, the storm's coming. Mm -hmm. So you better get ready for it because the storm's going to come for all of us. That's the reality. Um, so to be able to to help those athletes. Uh, uh, mitigate those very difficult uh, circumstances when they can do it on the mat or they can do it in the training session they're going to help them do it in life as well mm -hmm. um, so I just think sharing the experiences that you know that you've gone through with regards to it was never an easy easy road like mm -hmm. nobody you know probably with the exception of John Smith <laughs> of, the, of the states who won like eight straight world and Olympic titles mm -hmm. there's not there's not too many athletes that are like that mm -hmm. there's, there's not and he, he lost a couple fights along the way yeah uh, and, and it makes you reassess what you're doing but the reality is you learn from our, we learn more from our failures than you do from the from the championships anyway so those those difficult times, uh, if you can get the athlete to reflect on what happened, uh, you know, kind of review, you know, your plan leading into that event. So what what went wrong? Why 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 did it happen that way? And what did you miss? What do we, what, what what can you learn from it? Mm -hmm. uh, so we do a lot of that. We do a lot of iterative process with regards to it's, it's like any other any other job. You know, you you go you got you got a task team that's going to take down a gang. Right, mm -hmm. you got a plan. You put it in, and it didn't quite work out. So why didn't it work out? Yep. And you reflect on that, and mm -hmm. you say, okay, so we need to make some changes moving forward. Wrestling is the exact same way, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, you, how was your how was your weight cut? Uh, how was your how was your social events prior to the event? Mm -hmm. You know, did you get enough sleep? Who are you hanging with uh, to, to get ready for it? So there's so many there's so many pieces. David Zilman's got a great line on Montreal. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, wrestling you can't really control a lot once you're on the mat, mm -hmm. but you can control a lot outside the mat. Yeah. You can you can control who you ha hang out with at night. You control what time you sleep. You control what you eat. You control how hard you're training. So there's a lot of things that you can control ahead of it, uh, even though you can't control the outcome of that match. Yeah, the controllables versus the uncontrollables. Yeah. You really got to... I mean, and that's what athletes should be focusing on, what they can control, because then the outcomes will follow maybe yeah. you know yes yeah, that process idea right yeah. we're, we're trying to develop that process mm -hmm. we're not worried about the outcome the outcome is going to take care of itself it will yeah. uh, if you're doing the right the, the right things to, to get to that spot uh, and you're willing to you know give it everything you got uh, I, I, t I talked to athletes about not making and I said we were at the Pan Am Games about three weeks ago down in Chile and we had six athletes we won five medals they did mm -hmm. a fantastic job and when we left there I said okay now we're all going to the national trials in, in Edmonton in a week mm -hmm. I said don't make it an if tournament give it everything you got you mm -hmm. don't want to walk away that thinking, oh, if I would have did this, I would have did this, I would have did this. No, you, you've done all the work ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Just go show us what you can do now. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Got to put the work in. You got to put the work in. You do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But in, 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 it's similar to life. The reality is, um, we're going out to Edmonton. There's 12 spots. Mm -hmm. Well, I have, I have about 120 athletes going out for those 12 spots. Mm -hmm. So there's only 12 athletes walking away that are going to feel really good Mm -hmm. walking out of that tournament. But as long as the the, the athlete that gets second or third has given it everything they possibly can, they can still walk out with their head high knowing they, they did everything they can. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's, it's like life, you know, we, like you go for a job interview, that doesn't mean you're going to get it. You mm-hmm. prepare as much as you possibly can to get that job. You've done all the background research. You've figured out who you're talking to. Um, you've, you've, you've done everything. Uh, but there's other good candidates out there as well. So, you, you know, if you don't get it, then you go reflect on, okay, what could I have done differently? And then you, you do it for the next one. So mm-hmm. wrestling is the exact same way. Yeah, wrestling basically prepares you for mm-hmm. life. It, it does, it, you know the, the the old adage, you know, if you f- for those that have wrestled, everything else is easy. Mm-hmm. That's the reality, you know. You, 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 there's not much where you haven't blood, sweat, and tears through it. So you know, you you got to go do a uh, podcast. Well, that's okay. We can sit and talk, and so you could. It's easy to get nervous, but long, you've done your preparation ahead of time. You feel good about what you're going to do. Uh, you go do a guest a, a guest speaker or a public speaking. Mm-hmm. Well, there's no one hitting you. There's no one. You don't got to cut any weight. You just go up there, talk. You, you know, you know, you're, you you've you've researched it. You know your information inside out. Um, yeah, I think it, I, I would agree that once you wrestle, there's nothing that, nothing else kind of compares to it. <laughs> yeah, man, you're putting yourself through mental anguish as you step into the room because you know sometimes, okay, this guy beat me up yesterday. I got to go back and face him again today. Yeah. I'm going to try a little bit harder. Yeah. So it, it makes you actually, you know, you get that mindset, that that wrestler mindset where, and it's it's that grit that, you, that they just chase after yeah. things. Yeah, I, I and. The part that I probably love about it more than anything is the humbling aspect of the sport. Mm. There's not yet, and you, Sean, you know that you've met a lot of wrestlers. There's not too many people that are not humble in this sport because the reality is, even in your own wrestling room, as soon as you step out of your weight class, you're going to get thumped. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, I was a fantastic 52 kilo wrestler, but the guy at 57, Lawrence Holmes, was the national champion at 57. Uh, yeah. So as yeah. soon as I stepped out, okay, he's 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 going to take it to me. And as yeah. soon as you, one one weight class above that. You got the number three guy, Eddie DiPolino, at 62 kilograms. So, like, the reality is, even in your own wrestling room, uh, it's it's kind of hard to be very uh, confident uh, or cocky to a certain extent when as soon as you step out of your weight class, you're going to get thumped. So that's what's great about our sport, for sure. Yeah, you know, I, I watched the UFC. Growing up, I watched the UFC, and there's a few uh, guys that I used to wrestle against that, uh, you know, that... that that were in there in their high level and you know guys like Randy Couture and Dan, Dan uh, Henderson uh, I would watch them because they were humble yeah. nowadays and I turn that sh- That's crap tough. on <laughs> I get yeah. I, I probably haven't watched one in about 10 years because I cannot stand the attitudes from some of the athletes and I get it they're trying to sell tickets yeah. but as a wrestler to know that you know every time you step in that on that mat you know you respect the individual but then you you, yeah. you prove it through your actions not through your mouth yeah a hundred percent, and that's what's still great about international wrestling. Mm-hmm. Uh, the respect, uh, the respect that the opponents have for each other. My favorite story is I was at the Olympics in '88, mm-hmm. uh, and the the uh, the Olympic final was between Russia and the Iran. Okay. Two countries that probably don't like each other too much, but the reality <laughs> is the Russian was Sergei Belaglazov, Michigan, Michigan coach. You're the Michigan, yeah, yeah. Uh, Michigan coach. Yeah. Uh, and after the match, so Sergey beat the Iranian in the final. He probably beat him eight to zero. Mm-hmm. The Iranian put Sergey on his shoulders and marched him around the room for everyone to see. Oh wow! That he respected his his opponent to that extent mm-hmm. and honored what he did. Yeah. Uh, and, and that doesn't happen too often for sure in the sport. But the reality is, we have to shake hands before the match. You have to shake hands after the match. You have to shake hands with the coaches. Mm-hmm. Um, and everybody, it's a combat of sport. You're given everything you possibly can on the mat. But the high level of respect. Uh, once you're finished, it's 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 amazing. It really is. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I'm sure the UFC guys are trying to sell. That's a, yeah. that's a big part of it. And they and they they've done a great job. You know, yeah. Dana White's done a great job with putting his business plan together and, and selling it for sure. That's not who we are. That's no. that's the hardest part for us. Is that we're not we're not we're not humble, especially Canadians. We it's very difficult for us to sit and talk about ourselves. Like it really is. Yeah. Um, and we we say sorry to everything. Yeah, a hundred percent, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, you know, I, and again, I like guys like Randy. I enjoyed watching, but that's with that model there that they have, where they just produce the big mouths. I mean, they did it with Randy. They did it with Dan. These guys weren't j- jerks. Yeah. So I mean, I, yeah. it just for me, it turned me off the entire sport. I think because my wrestling base, because of that yeah. that respect for you know the opponents yeah. or for the the sport in itself, yeah. it just it's, it seems like it's just. 
Yeah, uh, but I'll give you a, I'll give you a, uh, a challenge to that one. So, and once again, he was Canadian. So, mm-hmm. George St. Pierre. Yes. UFC phenomenal at UFC. Very humble individual. Yes. He still uh, he still goes out to the Montreal Wrestling Club and, and trains with the Montreal Wrestling Club wrestlers. Yeah. He, he likes to stay in shape, obviously, and has given back to a lot to that club because that's where he got a lot of his wrestling base out of. Mm-hmm. Uh, but a very humble gentleman, like yeah. very giving. Very he he would sit down and talk to you in a heartbeat. That's just who he is. Mm-hmm. Just a very nice gentleman. Yeah, and I heard yeah. he didn't he come out. Uh, yeah, we had, we had him as a as the ambassador for the under twenty three national championships. It was in Laval, Quebec. Mm-hmm. Uh, Laval, the suburb of Montreal. Uh, so he came out and, and was the ambassador for the, for it. And you know, uh, it was just great great opportunity to, uh, for him to give back to a sport that's given him so much too. Yeah, yeah. I heard he actually came back and uh, gave Vitor Zimmerman in his championship belt after one after of one fights. of the, after one of those fights he did. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's in the room. He's got it in the room. Yeah, nice picture and yeah, just a nice gentleman, right? Like yeah. once, once again, combat. You come out of a combat sport, it's kind of hard not to be. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh man, so uh, your journey through wrestling. We've talked about how you got there. We tell you, you, and then now you're you're in the office. You're, you're <laughs> pen to paper again. Are you yeah. retired from? Uh, so I, yeah, I, I uh, yes, I am. I uh, when I before I took this uh, this role, I so I did over thirty years in education. Mm-hmm. Uh, Seventeen as a teacher. Uh, I think 14 as a principal Mm -hmm. uh, and then the last couple of years as a superintendent Mm -hmm. Um, and then when this role came up it was one of those opportunities that I couldn't pass up so I had an opportunity to retire from education uh, and then move into this wrestling role. So it's, it's a full-time job. I uh, I'm, I try to be in the training centers as much as I can. Mm-hmm. Try to be in the training centers as much as I can because it's it's kind of like being a principal. Yeah. How do you know what's happening in the classroom if you're not in the classroom? Yeah. How do you know what's happening on the, on the on the playing field if you're not out there watching the kids playing? So wrestling is the same way. I need to be in the training center. After this, I'm heading down to St. Catharines. Mm-hmm. Um, so I try to get to the training centers as much as possible. I do have to go to a couple days to Ottawa a month mm-hmm. uh, for meetings and things like that. That's part of the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, the of the time I'm doing policy work and development and, and reaching out to international opportunities uh, kind of from home as well. So it's, it's, it's worked out well that I do a little bit of work from home. I'm in the training centers quite a bit and I'm in Ottawa a little bit. Um, and it's and I'm giving back. That's the, that's the reality. And as and, and soon as I'm not enjoying it, you know, once you're retired, you want to make sure you're doing something that you, that you really enjoy. Mm-hmm. So once I'm not enjoying it, I'll, I'll, I'll pass it on to the next generation. Uh, if I don't think I'm having an impact on people, if I don't think I'm making a difference, then I, that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to make a difference. Uh, I gave myself, I always have a kind of a five-year plan. This time it was, it was kind of a six-year plan. Mm-hmm. I came in in 22, 22. I have two years to get to the 24 Olympics. You can't do a lot in two years, mm-hmm. but I think it can make a difference by the time 28 comes around mm-hmm. uh, with regards to making sure that we have the right culture in our sport, mm-hmm. uh, the respect level, uh, the psychological safety in all our wrestling rooms, the athlete wellness, uh, but, but above all, we're trying to put kids on the podium. So it's that, it's that, com- it's that kind of a holistic athlete development. I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I personally not really worried about the medals. Like I'm not. I think they'll take care of themselves mm-hmm. if we do it the right way, and we're trying to make sure that we're treating our athletes holistically, making sure they develop as good people, good citizens, are willing to give back, are going to become phenomenal leaders, mm-hmm. uh, community leaders. Uh, the the medals take care of themselves. They really do. Yeah. Uh, but we have to make sure we've created that culture of collaboration and respect and, and gratitude. We're so thankful to be in a in a, in a sport that gives us so much. And the opportunity for us to give back, uh, how, how would you not want to do that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, Chris, man, thank you so much for coming on the show. I know it was hard to get you in here because uh, you are so busy. I mean, we we're talking about sca- scheduling, going back and yeah. forth, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, but I'm so thankful that you stuck with it and wanted to come into the studio. I like it better when we're in the studio. Uh, sometimes we'll do it on uh, WebEx or whatever because the, the distance. Um, but thank you for coming down and uh, telling us about your new role, one, and telling about, uh, of course, who you were as a wrestler and what you did because I think that's an important thing, too, is I think we need more stories like yours coming out you know stepping up for your brother yeah. i mean i love that as it, in itself yeah. it's a it speaks volumes about your character thanks so I, think, I appreciate that i, think I, I hope uh, i hope your listeners kind of uh tune in next yeah. week it's out of edmonton it's on that flow wrestling channel okay uh and then coming out of march in mexico you're going to see some of our, we have some we have phenomenal athletes like honestly we do we have, we have some uh on the women's side some very deep weight classes the, yeah. the one weight class has three world bronze medalists in it mm-hmm. like we have some deep deep weight classes uh, we're going to put some some phenomenal athletes onto the national team that are going to be bidding for uh, 
uh, international Olympic spots, yep. and then we have a few that are going to be shooting for medals for sure. So yeah, yeah it's going to be an exciting year. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing yeah. it. I really am. This uh, this is uh, I, you know I looked at the Canadian website, uh, Canadian uh, loot. Uh, what, yeah, what, Canada what, Wrestling Loot. Canada yeah. Wrestling. It's changed since <laughs> I was there. Yeah. Right? So, um, but I'm looking at the website. I was looking at the team the other day, and I'm like, okay, man, there's some tough kids on there. So yeah. I got to say, kids, because I'm. I, I, I call them kids too, and I, I feel bad because they're all they're all grown people. Like they're yeah. all, they're grown women and grown men. But because they're still my daughter's age, I go, these are still kids to me too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I treat them that way. Is your daughter wrestling at all? Or? No, I have two daughters. Yeah. Uh, without getting into too much, they yeah. uh, they took the field hockey road. They're on the nice. national field hockey team. One girl was on for ten years. One girl was on for five years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they had a wonderful experiences. Uh, they've both retired from the sport. Uh, one's a teacher and one's going into optometry. So they're great uh, kids. and Great mentors yeah. at home, too. Great mentors at home, yeah, yeah, for That's sure. That's awesome. awesome. Well, thank, thank you, Chris, so Thanks. much I really for coming. I really appreciate it. And